So I want to show you guys, oh, of course my head just clogged up there while I'm doing this, but we'll clean that there in a second. Okay, I want to show you guys a symptom on a beta machine. One of my viewers commented about how he's got a problem with his machine and he's getting a bunch of lines in the picture. Right, like that. He's getting multiple lines through the picture and they won't track out. And what can cause this type of symptom, you can see I haven't created the symptom as bad as his because I don't want to break my machine. But what can happen on these 7-Eleven type chassis, the slimline chassis, is one of the tape guides, that the main guide that pulls the tape out, doesn't lock completely into its guide, into its block. And basically what I've done is I've just created a fault here. I'm just going to... create the, the fault by I'm just putting something in to jam the guide so that it won't lock all the way in place and there's the type of symptom that we get and usually what causes that and you'll see what I've done here I'm just preventing this guide from going all the way into its proper groove I'm just gonna lift the camera up so you guys can see how it's supposed to be normally what happens when the tape threads on these machines is that the main guide that pulls the tape out. Now this is not the 7-Eleven chassis, this is the little newer one. This is the last generation of Betamax. I don't have a 7-Eleven that's working. The 7-Eleven chassis that I have, I robbed the regulator out of it to fix another machine and I haven't put one back in. But um, this is basically this mechanism here. Maybe we'll do a video on the front loader on this one too because it's a little different than the others. This one here has a separate motor to load the tape instead of using that planetary gear set and the plunger. This is a plungerless, so there's no solenoid on this one. It's all done with this uh, cam gear and worm gear and uh, there's actually a mode encoder switch on this one, uh, on this machine right down here. Anyway, when you load the tape, what happens, but the, but the threading is basically the same. This is the main, uh, what we call the shuttle block. This block here with the two guides and this has to lock into there's a groove a V groove here at the end and uh, it locks into it actually presses up against there's a bar down here and it locks into that bar and it presses it it, it loads all the way until the bottom of the guide locks into this bar and then it continues to press to compress a spring so that the guide is locked in the exact place. Now some of the other ones actually have a little V groove here that the, that the guide actually rests in. And you gotta be sure that something doesn't get jammed in there. You know, if, if, if some debris gets jammed in there and causes that guide to stick, the guide won't reach, won't extend all the way into its fully loaded position. And when that happens, the guide could be, well right now you see this is rigid. It, it doesn't move around much. You have to kind of put a lot of a lot of effort to wiggle it because it is locked in place. You can see the spring when I compress it. So it's held in place by a spring. But if it doesn't complete the loading cycle or if the gear has skipped the tooth or something that's preventing the, the uh, tape from fully loading uh, into position, this guide could be back a little bit. And if this guide is back a little bit like that, then what, en what you end up happening is it changes the angle of the tape and you get the lines in the picture like here we'll show you and then when the guide is back in place properly of course now we've got the proper threading we don't have the lines in the picture that we had old Las Vegas. I shot that back in the 80s. Actually the, the video, this video is up on my channel by the way, the edited video. But I shot this video back in the 80s when I went through there. I went, I went through Vegas a couple times. Uh, first time I went through I was hauling around, oh, it's ridiculously uh, heavy. It was uh, the EVO, um, EVO 340 Beta 1 deck and I was using at the time it was a uh, Sony DXC M3 
that I had from uh, a shoot that I was doing and we rented the equipment to uh, do a shoot down there. I was hired to shoot a wedding of all things down in Las Vegas. It would have been 1980, I'm going to say 85, maybe 86. Anyway, uh, I rented equipment and uh, I had it for an extra night so I took it out on the town and did some shooting. And then, but I didn't do a lot of shooting. And then the next time I went down, I took down my, uh, this was my beta camera that I took down and uh, did it again. This is just, I think this is the raw footage, actually. Anyway, you get the idea. If that guide is not in place, you're going to have a problem and it's not going to track properly. So make sure that the tape is completely threaded and this will be locked in place It'll be fairly, you'll be, I mean, you'll be able, to be able to move it if you push on it a little bit, but it will be locked in place. It won't be loose. If it's loose, you're not going to get the right angle because if it doesn't pull the tape all the way into position, it will actually change the actual angle that the tape wraps around the head drum and that'll cause the video heads to, to uh, intersect multiple tracks and then you get the lines in the picture. Hope this helps for people that are, that are struggling with a beta machine. I know there's not a lot of people using beta out there these days, but I get a lot of requests for them because I think probably what we're running into now is there are people that have got old tapes and they're trying to get tapes recovered and put onto a digital format and they haul out the old machine and it's not working. And of course, this being an obsolete technology today, it's, uh, it's pretty hard to try and get these things serviced. Nobody's servicing them and there's no parts available. The only way you can fix these things is to basically pick parts off another machine to uh, get them working. So I wish people the best of luck with them and uh, enjoy your old beta machines. Let long live the old beta and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.